my name is Chad Everett Clough. Uh, I'm coming up to my 45th birthday. I live in Wellingborough. Um, I'm married to a beautiful woman and I have two uh, irresistibly cute children who are both cute and mischievous in equal measures. Um, my job title is Tudor Dental Technician. Um, as to what I do, uh, is probably the subject of <laughs> many questions actually. Um, I teach both undergraduate and uh, postgraduate students and uh, our job is to uh, help students understand the, uh, the technological side of the work that they do in the clinic, so how that supports and how that actually complements uh, the work both done in clinic and in the dental laboratory. Um, I have worked in the dental school as from today, seven years, seven months and seven days. So uh, I studied at the Eastman Dental Hospital uh, and that's where I did most of my training. Um, as far as the teaching qualification is concerned, that came through uh, Queen Mary, that's a teaching fellowship. Um, I've, yeah, I've worked in a few uh, different uh, professions. Just prior to going back to school to study dental technology, uh, I was managing a charity, uh, a children's orphanage in Latvia. I did that for a couple of years. Um, prior to that, I was a minister for, uh, a bivocational uh, minister for 17 years. Uh, and I uh, did some local pastoring, so I, I oversaw a church. Uh, and I did some overseas work. I lived in Southeast Asia, in Malaysia, uh, Singapore, Borneo. I did some volunteer work overseas uh, with that. Um, prior to that, I had actually uh, I had given it the thought of studying dentistry. Um, I took a, what I thought was going to be a gap year, which turned out to be a little bit longer than a gap year. All students come in to the dental laboratory with varying degrees of skill. Some of that might be natural. Some people have a natural proclivity towards making things or have a creative side to them. And some people uh, may struggle initially. I, to me, that, that doesn't determine uh, the, largely the success of a student um, in the same way that clinical skills uh, are often acquired over time. I think the key element for me, what I look for in a student, is that they care and that they care about what they do, whether that's in the laboratory, whether it's in the clinic, whether it's just walking down the hallway, um, treating people with respect, uh, being kind, uh, courteous, those things uh, are key to uh, your education generally. And I think if you apply that to whatever you do in the dental laboratory, it will serve you well. Uh, so I think I wouldn't be concerned so much about those who uh, find it easy to do dental or maybe struggle with the concept of these things. I don't determine that being a bad or a good student. I think uh, their attitude determines their altitude. Some are memorable uh, uh, for good reasons, <laughs> and some of them are set themselves apart for not so good reasons. But I think, um, again, the key is is the integrity that in which you approach your work and. Also, those that realise early how important the dental laboratory is in terms of they connect the dots. It's, it's not a separate entity. It is in the sense that it's a separate profession. It operates in its own parameters, uh, but the two are inseparably linked. And if you understand that earlier on in your uh, education, when you go on to general practice, it'll be a natural thing. It won't be artificial. It'll be organic, <clears throat> something that you'll, uh, you'll go into practice already having the understanding of, uh, I need to communicate with the dental laboratory, I need to understand uh, what's done and what the expectation is. Uh, well, okay. I'd probably be telepathic, I think that would be, probably. I think telekinesis would be um, a bit too disruptive. And uh, you'd, you'd be on. You'd only really use it, and it would be obvious that you were using it. 
whereas telepathic you can kind of be using it and people wouldn't really necessarily know they were using it so you sort of covertly uh, do that I think that would be much more interesting I, yes. Well, the ones that I can show you, uh, let's have a look, what would be, uh, okay, here we go. That's me. Oh, definitely a rock star, yes. Yes. Um, yeah, anybody that's spent any time in the dental laboratory will, would have heard my uh, uh, singing I'm not quite sure what the quality of it is, but certainly I like to sing. I like to, to um, I have this annoying habit of, in conversation, when somebody's either talking or around me or I'm talking with somebody, and I say a sentence and it reminds me of a lyric in a song, I have to sing the song. <laughs> I'd hope to think that I'd be doing something creative in, uh, in some capacity. Well, I don't wear a bow tie on the weekends, <laughs> if that's what you mean. Um, I was asked that once actually, because no one ever had seen me without a bow tie. Although I don't often frequently wear a bow tie as much as I did before. Um, I don't know, I, t I draw my style from many different... Uh, there's, there's a chap named uh, um, Lapo Alcan, I don't know if you've ever come across him. He's got a, quite a unique style. Um, and the most thing I like about him, <clears throat> he's not afraid to uh, be himself or to to, to uh, dress himself or to be himself and that sometimes can come across quite odd <clears throat> but he's very comfortable with it and because he's comfortable with it I think it, there's an attractiveness that comes with that. I'm Mr. C and just to say that whatever you do aspire to inspire. This has been an interview recording from the Densock website if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and follow us on Instagram. <laughs>